in your own words magnify God tell him you are God there is none like you none so glorious none so powerful none so holy you are God you are God bless him with all of your heart only you are holy there is none beside you who are at and evermore will be holy 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 lord god all of my early in the morning early in the morning a song shall rise to you you for the privilege of being in your presence this morning Jesus we thank you because you're here your power your glory your presence your anointing is in this place we lift you up we give you all the glory all the praise all the honor all the adoration we magnify you today and as we do so Lord build your throne in our midst heal the sick set people free open our eyes to see you open our ears to hear you let the entrance of your word transform change minister heal deliver set free give a word and season that will bless your people we thank you we thank you we give you praise we magnify you Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's celebrate the Lord this morning. Magnify Jesus. Come on, give God a praise. Give him praise. Bless his name. Bless him. Bless his name. Whoa, about Asha. I want you to reach out and welcome about five people. Tell them, good morning. God bless you. You look gorgeous and beautiful. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. If it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. 
so glad. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. So glad. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. So glad. If it had not been, been for Jesus, where would I be? I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. He 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 saved me. So glad. So glad. So glad. So glad. So 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 glad. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Welcome to this morning's service. Trust in the Lord to bless you, enrich your life, give a word in a season that will change your life, transform you, heal you, deliver you. I pray that the word today will truly lift your spirit, give you victory in the name of Jesus. Welcome everyone who's with us today, particularly all our friends who are coming for the first time. You're only a guest once in prayer city after that. This is your city. Praise God. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn to the book of Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 2, we read verses 1 to 5. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. If you're turning to a paper Bible, it's about the fifth or the third book to the end of the Old Testament. I think some of you need to convert, use an iPad, use a phone, use something, carry your Bible electronically. And if you don't have, if you can't find it, just look at the screen. Zechariah chapter 2 from verse 1. If you're there, say amen. amen. I lifted up my eyes again and looked and behold a man with a measuring line in his hand. Then said I, whither goest thou? And he said unto me to measure Jerusalem to see what is the breadth thereof and what is the length thereof. And behold, the angel that talked with me went forth and another angel went out to meet him and said unto him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. For I saith the Lord will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her may God bless his word can I hear you say a good amen? amen let me break this chapter down a little bit before we give the topic basically what's happening here is maybe the king commissioned a land surveyor to survey Jerusalem to know its exact size. In today's world, the surveyor will bring out what's called a theodolite. And with that, you get accurately the size of the city. But then an angel went to tell the young man, hey, what you're measuring today is small compared to what I'm about to do. The boundaries you will find is small compared to the true boundary of Jerusalem. The day is going to come when they will cross your measuring line. So our title today is crossing the measuring line. Crossing the measuring line. I don't know who it is, but God is about to make you cross the measuring line. Some boundaries have been drawn around your life, but you're going to exceed them. Some limitations have been placed on you. But I believe God because the Holy Spirit is in this service. God will give you grace to overcome. Amen. The measuring line was meant to be a line of limitation. That the enemy puts on you. But today you will break that line. Amen. You will break the limitation. Amen. You will exceed the limitation in the name of Jesus. A limitation is anything restrictive that wants to keep you in a certain limited position. But today again I declare you will exceed it. A limitation is a lack of capacity, more especially when God wants to bless you beyond your current capacity. And I pray again, God will make you exceed that capacity. 
a limitation could be an, an inability. It can be a handicap on your life, something you can't achieve, something beyond your power, a limit that's placed on you. I hate the language in golf. Every time I go to play, the go, particularly you go to a new golf club, they say, what's your handicap? I feel like saying, I have none. But see, it's the language of the game. They have to ask, by that they mean, what's your weakness? So a limitation, a line that has been drawn in your life, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a weakness at the moment, but I see grace coming on you. A limitation is an impediment, something that really has become a blockage, a hindrance, a chain holding you down. But I hear the chain falling. A limitation is an inhibition, something that keeps you from really maximizing your life, fulfilling your destiny, becoming whom God calls you to be. But I see you exceeding all those inhibitions. Something to create a constraint on you was placed on you, but you are moving forward. You will break the limitations. You will walk into the levels God has for you. You will reach the dimensions God has for you. If you believe somebody say good amen. amen. When you have a limitation on your life, it's like a ceiling had been placed upon you. And no matter what you do, you can't exceed that ceiling. I heard of a man who found a louse, you know, that thing in people's hair. And he put it in a glass and covered it with this perforated covering. And the louse kept jumping, wanting to jump out of the cup. But every time it hit the lid, it stayed in the cup. It kept hitting hit in the lid and it stayed in the cup after a very long while I guess the louse must have given up so when the cover was removed the louse did not exceed where it used to jump to many of us there is a limit in our mind something tells us you could never go beyond this your fathers did not exceed this even the people you respect did not exceed this but I want you to know today I declare into your life that you're exceeding those measuring lines God is going to take you beyond those lines. You know, I've had the privilege to go to Jerusalem several times. I go twice a year. And I wish the man who was measuring here will see today's Jerusalem. Because what he measured actually has a wall around it right now. The walls of those days are still standing. But the interesting thing is, the city beyond those walls is almost 100 times more than the boundaries of the old Jerusalem. That's exactly what God was saying here. That where I'm taking this city is beyond what you are measuring now. Many of us are here today, we carry more potential than we can ever imagine. Something is trying to keep you within limitation. The enemy is fighting your capacity, but I'm praying for you. And by the anointing, yokes will be destroyed. Limitations will be destroyed. Someone is going to exceed those boundaries. The boundaries your fathers drew, your mothers drew, you will exceed them. The measuring line is that limit you cannot go beyond. It tells you this is how far. But God says with me, anything is possible. In Matthew 19, 26, the Bible says, but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So because my fathers could not exceed it, don't mean I will not exceed it. Because my mentors could not achieve it, don't mean I cannot achieve it. In Jeremiah 32 verse 27, the Bible says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? So God is saying to you that you will exceed the measuring line. You will exceed the lines of limitation. Some of us, those lines have been drawn from when we were children. Some of us, it was the words that were spoken into our life, either by a teacher or somebody whom, who had the opportunity to mold our life, but they did not know that by the words they were speaking, they were drawing the wrong boundary lines, and they kept us within a confinement. But today, I declare you are coming out of the confinement. Somebody's exceeding those lines. You're coming into new levels, new seasons, new favors, new testimonies, new breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, somebody shout yes. yes. I could tell you about 101 kinds of limitations. 
And for many of us, it could be one thing or the other. For some, it's racial prejudice. Numbers 12, verse 1, the Bible says, and this thing has been around for a long time. The Bible says that the sister and brother of Moses could not accept his wife because she was an Ethiopian. And Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. And an Ethiopian in Bible time is not current Ethiopia, please. Current Ethiopia can be part of the Bible's Ethiopia. But the word here doesn't have to do with a nation. Current, current Ethiopia used to be known as Abyssinia. Ethiopia actually means black face, ethi. That is, has in color, opia, op optics. So, a black-faced woman. We don't know why they rejected her. It may not even be her color. It may just be the fact that she wasn't Jew like they, Jewish, like they, that, like they were. Certainly, she wasn't dumb because her father was the one who trained Moses. Because it was the wisdom of her dad that helped Moses to lead three million people. But that prejudice has stopped many people. If you allow other people to define you, then they can confine you. But it's not only racial prejudice, it could be gender limitation. There are people who look down at you because you're either a man or a woman. We know more of today's world. There has been gender limitation when it comes to a woman. But you've got to realize that God is no respecter of gender. In Christ, there is no male or female. Don't let nobody put you down. Is someone hearing me this morning? Particularly the ladies. Don't let nobody put limitations on you. So, sometimes some of the best in certain areas have been women. First time I'll fly the largest plane on earth, the Airbus 380. Flying from France to Ivory Coast. I flew it again yesterday from Dubai to London. But the first time I flew in an Airbus 380, this thing is so humongous. It is so big. I had heard about it. The whole of the top floor from the beginning to the end and the ground floor full of passengers, about 580 passengers. It was a lady pilot. She came on. Bonjour. <laughs> and before you could say Jack Robertson, the plane lifted like a piece of paper. I said, Jesus is Lord. How many ladies are you ought to celebrate yourself and when we got to what's the capital of Ivory Coast now Abidjan when we got to Abidjan she put the plane on the on the tarmac like piece of cake we landed we didn't know we had landed I mean come and see yesterday it was the same Airbus 380 Qantas when we landed I knew we landed <laughs> So God is no respecter of gender. Now I know that uh, it's Sunday morning, it's not a theological class. Uh, so let me just uh, mess you up a little bit with the scripture that I've messed up the church for a long time. I'm not going to explain it in full. I'm just going to ask questions that will make you see that there was a problem with the translators. When King James in 1611 wanted to translate the Bible, from Greek and Hebrew, he used unbelievers who were very scholarly in the two languages, Hebrew and Greek. The guys didn't know the heart of God. They were just translating and they messed up people. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34, 35. Let your woman keep silence in the churches for it is not permitted unto them to speak. Pastor, you hear me see? But they are commanded to be under obedience. As also said the law. Say you heard that one. <laughs> and if they will learn anything. Let them ask their husband at home. <laughs> for it is a shame. For a woman. To speak. In the church. Now let me show you the theological problem here. Even though this is not uh, a class to teach uh, scripture, but I just wanted you to see that. Don't let nobody put limitations on you. 
Let your woman keep silence in the churches. Hmm, 1 Corinthians 14. In chapter 11, he said the woman should prophesy. An hour later, you said they should keep silent. So there's a problem. If a woman can prophesy, why can't she preach? Because which one is greater, prophesying or preaching? I would say prophecy because in prophecy, you don't know what God is about to speak through you. You just speak what he says, but in preaching, you prepare. I knew what I was going to preach today since, 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 since Monday. I already knew I was preaching this. Since Monday, I prepared. But with prophecy, you receive. So if a woman is qualified to receive direct from God, then God is not telling her not to speak. He said, for they are commanded to be silent, to be silent and be under obedience as also said the law. Which law? Not Genesis, it's not there. Not Exodus, it's not there. Not Leviticus, it's not there. Not Numbers, it's not there. Not Deuteronomy, it's not there. Not up to Malachi, it's not there. So which law? The Talmud, the law of the Jews, that was their own cultural law, is what somebody have turned to a statement here. Then it says, and if they want to learn anything, let them ask the husband at home. The guy, suppose he's at the pub. <laughs> Already drunk. Doesn't know the Lord. He's not born again. He comes home and you say, oh, darling, this speaking in tongues thing. Uh, how do I receive the Holy Ghost? And the guy bobs in your... Mm. <laughs> Holy what? <laughs> Am I making sense here? So you can see from this passage that there was a mistranslation by those people where there was a question. They turned it to a statement. I don't have the time to explain, but let me just give you the picture. Look at me. The church started next door to the temple of the Jews in Corinth. Most of the people who moved to the church were once in the temple of the Jews. They couldn't stand the fact that the people who were here moved here. And when they moved here, they found liberty. They didn't cover their hair like they used to do, like Jewish women used to do. They did their hair very nice. They had liberty. Women were leading. And these guys were criticizing them. And Paul was asking a question, and questions were turned to statements. See love. Nothing in scripture stops a woman. Another one which have been misused often time is 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, shamefacedness, sobriety, not with broided hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly array. So you see some churches, they take this verse and make women wear a massive Jesus, I'm looking for a husband cap. <laughs> and dresses that look like a masquerade while the men are looking suave and cinchy and they wear Rolex on their arms and they use this scripture against women and the chapter is not about the dress and Paul was making a reference that a woman should be a person of prayer these things should not be her first priority she could wear them but they should not be her priority but some have used this scripture and caused problem in churches well, okay, I see his stand is that you should look good, feel good, smell good. We should not endure you, we should enjoy you. You should come around and say, oh, wow, that's a nice perfume there. What, what's the name? Not the one which you say, good morning, and we have some, good morning. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. So every limitation somebody's trying to put on your destiny, you are crushing it this morning. I said you are crushing it. I took some time there because nowadays you find that particularly within our community, people are in confusion and such religious spirit comes into the church while we are not libertinian, yet we have liberty. We have the liberty of Christ to live for Christ and to enjoy our God and not endure being believers. Many have therefore allowed themselves to be stopped. Be whom God called you to be. 
You are gifted. You are anointed. You are blessed. I like to see the day when some of the best CEOs that will rise out of KICC will be the women. They'll be owners of property. They'll be owners of, of businesses. The day will come. God will raise awesome women in the house. Achievers, breaking grounds, doing great things. If you believe it, say a good amen. Then there is ethnic limitations. In the days of Jesus, Jesus made a statement which ordinarily looks racist. But Jesus was pushing the woman in Mark chapter 7 verse 27. The woman comes, she wants healing for her daughter. And Jesus said, the food of children cannot be given to dogs. That could have been a racist statement. But the woman had a good spirit. And she said, well, even the dogs can eat the crumbs. You know, with some people, if you have said the children of the food cannot be given to dogs, they'll start unbuttoning their clothes. He called, he called me a dog. He called me a dog, man. I'll show you what a dog is today. He called me a dog. And many have allowed ethnic limitation to stop them from destiny. Balloons don't rise because of their color. They rise because of their content. From today, you are crossing the measuring lines. If anybody uses ethnicity or race to judge you, they make a mistake because they don't realize that much of today's prejudice comes from the heart of misunderstanding people. You could pick words and you can see that they don't even have meaning. When we use the word Caucasian, it has no meaning because it was originally coined by a German doctor 300 years ago who thinks that all white people come from the Caucasus Mountains. And that's not right. He was wrong. Is somebody getting me? He, he was wrong. Don't let anyone also use age as a limit on you. I see people today, they are 50 and they begin to carry themselves old. They say, we old people. At 50, you are planning and praying to be 100 and you are carrying yourself old at 50. I pray strength for you. I pray grace for you. I pray the power of God to come upon your life. You will live long. If you want to live longer and you start carrying yourself old at 50, it means you have 50 years to look old. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. You got to get yourself together and people even have a problem. Let people have a problem guessing how old you are. Be strong in the Lord. Strengthen yourself. Break all the barriers. Do what they don't expect for your age group anymore. Run like somebody fight like David fought win like others have won before some are saying I'm a line crosser saying like you mean it I'm a line crosser if anybody has prejudice in their heart let it be their own problem don't let age stop you even if you have some grays on your head like I do it's just a color of the hair it's not the content of my heart let the weak say let the weak say let the weak say, put your hands together, give God a praise, give him the praise. You need to get yourself together, stop dressing like an old woman, stop dressing like an old man. Put those suits away, get yourself some spanking new, nice 21st century, 2016 stiletto shoes, skin shoes, crocodile shoes. Don't worry if the crocodile is looking for you. After all you are wearing is skin, smell good, droop nice, carry yourself right. Somebody say, I'm a line crosser. Say it again, I'm a line crosser. We have too many people in our, in our community in particular. We are too age conscious. Somebody a little younger than you, five years younger, calls you by and say, are you calling me? Are you talking to me? You should say auntie. Why should I say auntie? Is your name not Matthew? I'll be all right. And I'll lose me as she more lower anymore. What's wrong with calling your name? We're too age conscious. And it becomes a limitation on us. Break out of it. Get your life together. Glory to God. Don't be a grumpy old man at 50. What's the name of those actors again? 
Donna Michi, is it? You've watched it, tell me. You're pretending like you never be, you've never watched it. Don't be a grumpy old man. Be a happy. How many happy people are here today? How many young people are in this service? Come and give God some praise. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Glory to God. And then there's economic limitation. There is the chance that somebody wants to use economic limitation to keep you. Society wants to keep you. Somebody wants to keep you at a particular level. That's why you get systems reacting when some people get blessed. They can't handle it. There is a prejudice when certain people get blessed. There's a prejudice when you drive a certain car. So why are you driving that car? Why shouldn't I? Prostitutes drive it. Pimps drive it. Thieves drive it. You know, people superimpose their own prejudice on your destiny. But you've got to make up your mind. I'm crossing the lines. I'm breaking the barriers. I'm crossing the measuring line. Who is measuring? Is it the neighbor's opinion that you measure your destiny or the grace of God on your life? You have to choose your own economic limitation. Don't let the enemy place it on you. In the Bible, we have the poor, John 12, 8. We have the poorer, Leviticus 27, verse 8. We have the poorest, 2 Kings chapter 24, verse 14. But you've got to make up your mind. If I really want to bless my generation, touch lives, have some young person go to school, have some kid find the future, have some needy people, clothe them, build an orphanage, I am Pastor Yemsi. We're talking this morning as we're driving to church. She's about to build. I don't know if I'm supposed to announce it. I will say it anyway. I've started, so I shall finish. <laughs> Mastermind. She's about to build an orphanage in Uganda. And she and I'm saying, oh, you're gonna get some things together and put some legals in place. She said, No, I just want my name on it. That's enough. But you know, you can't do that. Broke don't help broke. Praise God. I said, praise the Lord. In that 2 Kings chapter 24, verse 14, the poorest in the land were even rejected from being carried away in slavery. That's another level. When a man is rejected from being carried away as a slave, he says, and he carried away all Jerusalem and all the princes and all the mighty men of valor, even 10,000 captives, all the craftsmen and smiths, none remained. Except the poorest sort of the people of the land. Poorest sort. They didn't even carry them in slavery. When a man is rejected from slavery. <laughs> tell your neighbor, it's in your Bible. Many times economic limitations have been placed on us by systems and have been placed on us by our own thinking. Every time you think God should bless you, somebody has an idea. They will like good places for themselves and for their children, but they don't dream good dreams for you. So you've got to cross the measuring line. Cross the measuring line. You do more good when God blesses you. Bible says in Psalm 66 verse 12, you've caused men to ride over our heads. We've been through fire. We've been through water. But you brought us out. Somebody say, I'm out. <laughs> Scream it loud. I'm out. <laughs> then he said, you brought us into a wealthy place. You may have not yet manifested it, but God have brought you in. Into the place of favor. You've crossed the negative lines. You've come into the kingdom of God. You've come into the commonwealth of Zion. And I declare and decree you will know the favor of the Lord. You will know the blessing of the Lord. If you believe it, say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Glory to God Almighty. There are many other negative lines that the enemy wants to use to hold us. Lines of abuses we've been through in life. Child abuse abuses people who have messed with us 
was watching a girl in Uganda. I don't want to go into all this thing about same-sex marriage or no same-sex marriage. But the girl, the, the guy who was interviewing her, the girl told the story of how a neighbor at the age of five tampered with her and messed her up in her mind. You know, that could be a hindrance in our lives if you don't let it go. And that's why you must leave it there. Leave it at the altar. Heal. Don't hold it. Don't block it. Don't bind it inside you. Yes, they may have hurt you, but your life is bigger than the people who messed you up. Don't let them own your destiny. Is somebody hearing me? We all have stories. We all have a past, but don't let your past mess up your future. Is somebody hearing me? I told you the story of how when I was like five, seven years old, my father had been part of the army and had gone in the, in the Congo uprising. He was part of the United Nations Army. Left us with a family to take care of us. All his salary was going to them. And because I had um, measles, they put me outside to sleep outside. And it was a barrack that was invaded by hyenas. I don't know if you've watched documentaries. My favorite channels are geography channels. The hyena is the most disrespectful animal. It has no honor for lions. Who is a lion? If a lion kills a hyena, will come and chase him away. And take the meat. And that's what I was left for. But destiny would not let me die. So we all have been through something. Some have been through fire. Some have been through flood. But God brought you out. You need to be totally out. Cross the lines. The measuring lines that say you will not be whom God said you will be. Cross those lines. Come into the purpose of God for your life. From today, something is changing for someone. If you believe it, say yes. Say it again, yes. I declare and decree something is changing in your life. But then there are some good lines you should run towards. You should run towards godly laws. Yes, there are measuring lines we should cross. But there are some deliberate lines you must leave around your life. Godly laws. God's word. Guiding your life. Becoming the parameters of your life. Jeremiah 31 verse 33. He said, this is the covenant that I will have with them. That they will obey me. And if they obey me, I will write my laws in their inward parts. And write it in their hearts. I will be their God. And they will be my people. Glory to God. These are the lines you should draw for yourself and say. Others may do it. I choose the path of godliness. I choose the path of godliness. When you do that, you've chosen to cross the measuring lines that hold you but you've chosen to draw the lines that help you then there are moral boundaries in the book of micah chapter 6 verse 8 micah 6 8 says he has shown you O oh man what is good what the lord requires of you that you should do justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly before the lord these are lines you draw for yourself so that when your friends are doing what they like and they are crossing these lines. You say, no, these are the ones I shouldn't cross. Yes, we live in a libertinian society and time when people will say, you can do it if you really want. You can do it if you really want. All this, relax, just do it. Is that Frankie goes to Hollywood? Oh, I don't know where he went to. But you've got to learn. There are some boundaries you place around yourself. The boundaries that help you. There are ethical boundaries also. Somebody say ethical boundaries. These are limits you place on yourself. When you place these boundaries on yourself, they bring a sense of responsibility. A sense of honor. A sense of maturity. A sense of dignity. Our understanding must be that if I place this once on my life, I don't lose, I gain. I become a better person. I prosper by allowing godly values. 
the world may tear it and redefine how life should be, but I choose the way of God. I may be a minority in that area, but the day will come when my minority becomes the blessed one. Then there is the measuring line of excellence which you should draw in your own life. And when you draw that, nothing can mess you up. I pray for you, the things that are keeping you, you will overcome them. You know, there are people who have not crossed certain boundaries. They have not crossed boundaries that are holding them because they've allowed others to say, no, 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 no. No, 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 don't go there. Don't be blessed. Stay where you are. Blessing might make you back like the devil is a liar. Don't let people announce to you before you cross the line. If anything is holding you, tell yourself, my father may have not been an achiever. I don't intend to die a failure. I pray for people today whom in your mind, you've not been able to enter all that God has for you. But from today, you are succeeding. You are crossing negative lines. You are breaking new grounds. You are reaching new levels. If you believe it, say a better amen. amen. Say a better amen. amen. Somebody here today, you've gone so far, but just one more step and you will enter the best season of your life. I pray for you, grace will be upon you. The hand of the Lord will be upon you. The grace of God will increase for you. The favor of the Lord will increase for you. If you believe it, say yes. Say yes. I pray for somebody here today. You are going beyond the lines. You are entering new levels. If you want to cross those negative lines, then it means once you cross them, you should draw new lines. Lines of excellence. Excellence in spirit. Excellence in spirit. In this new year, get yourself into the Bible. Play the Bible several times on your iPad. Play it on your phone. Listen to it. Let somebody bless your life. Let them speak into your life. Let the word of God play severally to your spirit. Don't be full of the junk out there. Don't let the BBC, ITV, Sky, the news that is not news be the barometer for your life. Let the word of God, which does not fail, be the one to draw the line in your life. As you allow the word of God, I see you rising. Not only excellent in spirit, but excellence in, excellent in attitude. When you're excellent in your attitude, you will get to places others cannot get to. You see, aptitude is not the key. It is attitude. Attitude will open doors. And when you have an excellent spirit and an excellent attitude, people will be looking for you to bless you. God will give you uncommon access. You will reach places your contemporaries never reached. Not only excellent attitude, but excellent outlook on life. Every time you open the window of your heart, don't just see the negatives in the world. See the possibilities. See where God can take you. See what you will achieve. See the grounds you will break. See the levels you will enter. See the things you will achieve. Then number four. You must have an, an attitude of excellence in wisdom. Seek for wisdom in the word of God. Seek for wisdom in the books others have written. Seek for wisdom in the messages you hear on Sunday. Don't just hear the message. Get it, buy it, play it several times. Psychologists say you can only retain 10% of what you hear. So get it. Play it severally until it resonates in your spirit and registers in your spirit, man. Excellence in wisdom. Because the Bible says by wisdom you will fight war. By wisdom you will conquer. Excellence beyond the call of duty. Take yourself to a new level. In 2016 you will not fail. The measuring lines that have been drawn for you. And someone is using it to judge you. You will exceed those lines. In the name of Jesus. Next time they look for you, you will not be where you used to be. You'll be on another level. I pray for you that your excellence will be beyond the standard. I said beyond the standard. You go to some places, they already have the standard they expect. You will be an exception. You will be a testimony. You will stand out in the name of Jesus. They're looking for something to condemn you, but they'll only see things that will surprise them. 
If you believe it, shout yes. I said shout yes. I pray for you excellence beyond expectation. In anything you do, I pray for business people today. The grace of God will be on your business. It will be on your work. It will be on your home. It will be on your life. Doors will begin to open for you. God will take you to levels you've never been. In the name of Jesus, God will make you exceed where you've ever been. If you believe it, say, I receive it. Amen. Say it again, I receive it. I, de I declare and decree today that the measuring line that I've been drawn to keep you shall be something you will cross over. I said you will cross it over. You will reach the places they said you will never reach. If you believe, say a good amen. Not exactly a great traveler when it comes to shopping. I'm just a person who travel, 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 travel to preach. So I've never been to Dubai before. I just was not interested. Until somebody had to drag me. They're having a birthday and church service. And it's a person who has really blessed me in life. And I wanted to go celebrate them. But I was really, really impressed by the city. I was impressed by man's ability to cross the measuring line. You know, you see these things on TV, you read it in magazines, but until you get there, you've now, you, you say, wow, how did they think about this? Well, I mean, when, when I had a little time, I could go out just on sightseeing. I said, drive me around. Take me first to the Palm City. I like to see how they went into the sea to create a whole, a whole city. Boy, I was so blown away. They create a whole city inside the sea. Each house has its own beach. I tell you, poor is not good. <laughs> I rebuke poverty. Amen. I curse poverty. Amen. I reject poverty. Amen. There are hotels in Palm City unusual and as we're driving there even before we get there the driver say oh sir right now we're driving and there's a canal being dug under us where we've just reached this canal they are digging it the sea will come to town and people will, will have their boats and their yachts go under the road i said what he said yes sir they've almost finished it. they're finishing it next year every building is 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 it's, I don't know, it's a shock. It's, 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 it's incredible. This is pushing the boundaries, crossing the line, crossing the measuring lines. Makes everywhere else look ugly. <laughs> Amazing. Almost looks artificial. Then I said to myself, and I was prepared to preach this message. This is crossing the measuring line. If man can do this, what God can do in my life. I'm praying for somebody here. You will surprise your generation. You will surprise your generation. I said you will surprise your generation. I declare to someone's life this morning, you will discover your true value. I declare and decree you will discover your true value. Look at me, look at me. I'm closing now, I'm closing. You can remain standing if you want to. You can remain standing. And I asked the driver, this United Arab Emirates, what is it made of? He said, there are seven, seven towns made up of this. I said, are they all this beautiful? He said, no. He said, only this one. And Abu Dhabi is near it. The rest are villages. Oh, so they belong in the same Emirate, but they are broke? He said, yes. He said, they just are the same old desert villages. Boy. It, 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 it just, you know, you can be in the same kingdom with some people and they don't see the power of the kingdom. They don't see what it can do in their life. You can come from the same womb and you have two brothers come out of the same womb and they are not the same thing. Ah! They are not the same thing. It requires certain things to be done for some people to be different. For for Jacob to overtake Esau, he had to take on his voice. May God give you a voice. Amen. He had to take on his cloth. May God give you a covering. Amen. 
He had to take on the food that his father liked. May God give you the seed that will open the doors for you. May God give you a voice, give you the covering, give you the food, give you the seed that will change your life, change your levels, change your life, change your levels. I pray for everyone listening to me today, both here and on television, that from this day, you will be free from limitations. I declare and decree into your life the limits your parents placed on you. You are breaking over it. You are breaking out of it. The limits society have placed on you. The limits of your education. The limits that the systems have placed on you. The limits that people's prejudices have placed on you. And the limits your own self prejudice have placed on you. You are breaking out of it. You are breaking out of it. I declare to someone's life today. I don't know who it is. You will enter the zones of fulfillment. I am praying for you right now. You will enter the zones of fulfillment. I pray for somebody here. You will discover capacity. You will expand your capacity. You will expand your capacity. I said you will expand your capacity. Forgive me. I have to go back to Dubai. That's my latest fad now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Pastor Yemi said, preach Dubai. Spoke Dubai. Didn't work until these people invited me to just come for that birthday and then they punished me by putting me it's not me it's not my money and it's not kicc but they put me in the most expensive hotel in town there the burj al arab oh jesus i thought i died and went to heaven when they opened the room my suite i fell under the anointing i said somebody wake me up Except that I had a few jealous people who said, how can you go alone? <laughs> I'm not mentioning names, of course. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is this. What I'm trying to say is, I was so, my mind was just so stretched because I'm a thinker. I'm a thinker. I think outside the box. I dream. I dream dreams. I see visions. I see how to change things. Maybe you are impressed with prayer city. I'm not. I want to see other things. I want to see, I want to see in front of this church as you come out for the building in front to become a restaurant. All glass with a waterfall. In fact, I want to see the day we put not just a waterfall, but a waterfall that responds to music. So that when you, hallelujah, the water, hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Forgive me. I know I'm crazy, but uh, that's who I am. I said, that's who I am. And if you know the poverty of my background, you know that to dream that way, it must be Jesus. You know, it must be Jesus. I mean, we were so poor, we had no table for eating. You ate where the food met you. Kitchen hallway dining table not in the lifetime of my parent so if you are not impressed me i'm impressed though ah it's amazing i'm praying for somebody here today you truly carry capacity you will walk in your capacity you will walk in your destiny you will discover your capacity you will walk in your capacity from today, you will exceed negative lines. You will embrace positive lines. You will cross the lines with excellence. You will cross with excellence. You will reach new levels. You will reach for your hidden blessings. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout, I receive it. I pray for some people here today. May God bring you into the zone of fulfillment. You will not live a life of emptiness. Pascal, the father of modern mathematics, said, Our life is empty until we find our fulfillment in God. Nothing really fulfills like knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I felt sorry also for the people who lived in that city. Some lived in incredible palaces, great cities, great hotels, apartments that are woo, 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 but they don't know Christ. 
My heart was broken for them. I pray for you that your life will truly be fulfilled. You will know the Lord in a powerful way. You will walk in the grace of God. You will discover hidden blessings. Hidden blessings. Hidden blessings. Hidden blessings. Hidden blessings. I pray for somebody here today, you will exceed negative limitations. Every limitation someone has been packaging to place on you, the Holy Ghost shatters it. They have their own plans to rubbish you, make nothing of you. But God will silence them. When they shoot their arrow, it will not work. No weapon formed against you will ever, 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 ever prosper. God will silence them. The Bible says, Isaiah 54 verse 17, and every tongue that rises in judgment against you, God himself will silence them. They call you name, but it will not stand. I declare to your life today, hidden blessings. Every hidden blessing that was waiting for you, as you cross those lines, they will be exposed to you. Somebody say, I receive it. Say it again, I receive it. Shout it loud, I receive it. Man, if you were a kid like myself, when we were kids, we read all those Arabian tales. Ali Baba and the 40 thieves, Abu the thief, all kinds of stories that came out of Arabian lands. These are desert places. And it's amazing what a concept from one man, Sheikh Al Maktoum, whose son is there today, one man dreams. And changes everything. There are things that are meant for you and your generations. And your children. They will not die with you. I said they will not die with you. God will bless you. God will favor you. Anointing will be on you. I pray for some people who are in this service today. May you embrace godly values. Where all these things come. May you embrace godly values. You will not backslide. You will not turn away. I pray for someone else here. You will go the extra mile. You will be an achiever. You will not sit down. You will break barriers. I declare and decree for someone here today. God will bring you into pleasant places. The Bible says for the boundary is fallen unto me. In pleasant places. Every pleasant place God has ordained for you. Is coming into your life. It is coming into your life. I said, it is coming into your life. I close this message today. I pray for you. There are some young men and women in our midst. There are some of us today, we look back, things we wish we achieved when we were at the age of those young people. I pray that maturity beyond your age will be given to you. Ability beyond your age will be given to you anointing beyond your age will be given to you grace beyond your age will be given to you if you believe it say I receive it say it again I receive it shout it loud I receive it I pray for you today you will achieve greatness you will pursue your dream with passion I pray for you today you will reach for what you thought was unreachable what they said was unreachable, unachievable, uh, uh, unassailable, God will give you grace. You will achieve it. You will reach it. Roger Bannister in the 50s was a medical uh, student here in the United Kingdom. There was, an, uh, there was a belief nobody could run a mile in four minutes. But Roger Bannister ran one mile in four minutes. From that day, all the limitations got broken. Nobody was afraid to run a mile in four minutes anymore. You can do it too. Try it. <laughs> That's how to live long. I pray for you today. The limitations that some people still have in front of them. You will be the barrier breaker. You will be the line crosser. You will be the barrier breaker. You will be the line crosser. Somebody say, I'm a barrier breaker. I'm a line crosser. I pray for some people in this service today. I feel so prophetic about this message. You will break new grounds. I said you will break new grounds. 
I pray for you, you will discover new wells. New wells of water. New wells of favor. New wells of blessing. New wells of water. New wells of blessing. New wells of favor. If you believe it, say yes. I pray for somebody here today, you will open new frontiers. I pray you, where angels dread, grace will come upon you. You will go there. Look at me, look at me, look at me. One of the things that characterized David, that changed David's life, was that he may not be many things. He was only 17 years old, somewhere there. But he had a lie on his heart. Is someone hearing me? He had a lie on his heart. And the Bible says the righteous shall be what? Bold as a lion. There is a level you reach where you will have greyhounds of the demonic realm that will try to chase you out of where God is taking you. They have no plans for you. They are dreaming how to stop you when God is planning to take you further. Today I stand on the authority of the word of God and as a servant of Jesus Christ and I declare the boldness of a lion will come upon you. The boldness of a lion will come upon you. The grace of a lion will come upon you. You will cross the boundaries. You will be an achiever. In the name of Jesus. Put your hands together. Give God a praise. Lastly. Lastly. In these 63 years that I've lived on earth, 64 in March, I have found you cannot go far unless you surround yourself with people who have empires in their mind. If you surround yourself with people who are just trying to escape, you also will be an escapist. You'll be a Houdini. But if you surround yourself with dreamers, visionaries people who see probably better than you see achievers then your heart cries for the same I pray for you today the right mentors the right helpers will surround your life the right mentors the right achievers the right helpers surround your life in the name of Jesus when you preach a message like this you touch on several areas and I know that some of them I did not deal with one of the areas I didn't deal with is the measuring lines of people who hurt you they hurt your name they tampered with your youth or they drew you into secret sin or they even molested you sexually or they stole from you they left you so hurt that every time you want to reach something keeps you back so I'm going to give some people the chance to say I'm going to walk to that altar and I'm going to leave the hurt at the altar. And from this day, I'm walking away from the hurt. And I'm walking into a new season. I'm walking into freedom. I'm walking into the joy of God. I'm walking into the peace of God. I'm walking into total deliverance. If you are one of such people, just come, stand under on the altar, and just begin to pray from your heart. Nobody's going to ask you what you're praying about. Just come. Come. Just begin to come. Just begin to come. Days are filled with sorrows and care. Hearts are lonely and drear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary, burdens are lifted at Calvary. 
Jesus is very near. I'd like you to just pray for yourself and say, set me free. Set me free, Jesus. Lose me from this hurt. From today, the pain I've been through, the hurt I've been through, set me free. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It's Jesus in my soul. For I have touched the hem of his, hem of his garment. And his blood has made me Oh, it is whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, it is Jesus Thank you, Lord Jesus Jesus in my soul Right, all I could seemed like nothing did me any good. Then I heard a Jesus was passing by. Then I decided to give him a try. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, Jesus. Jesus, heal this people, set free, heal their hearts, heal their pain, heal their hearts, touch their lives. Jesus, oh, I have touched the name of us. Yes. Please just lay a hand on your heart. Father, I pray for everyone at this altar that you, Jesus, will touch their lives, set free, heal them from the hurt, feel them from the pain free them from the things they've been through those who were lied against let the blood of Jesus wash those whom somebody tampered with will bring total deliverance those whom people stole from them stole their youth stole from them father heal their heart we wrap each one with the love of God 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 the love of God, the love of God, the love of God, the love of God will release peace upon you today. Will release the joy of God upon you today. From this day, let your life turn around. Let the healing come. Let the healing flow. In the name of Jesus, when you walk away from this altar, you walk away from challenges, you walk away from battles, you walk away from trouble. Walk into a new season. Walk into the joy of the Lord. The peace of God who passes understanding. Walk into total deliverance. Walk into hope. Walk into salvation. In Jesus' name. Be healed. Be healed. I pray for you as you walk away from this altar. The thing that have bedeviled you will no longer touch you. We sever you from every of those challenges. Be free. Be free. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may go back to your seat.
Leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust him, never doubt. He will surely bring you out. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. To the level that you were blessed today, give God praise. today you are crossing those measuring lines. The boundaries they drew for you is too old. In 1469 some people left Amsterdam to go live in New York. Troubled all the time by pirates. They built a wall to stop the pirates from coming and called it Wall Street. Not long trade began around that area and in 1679 Britain conquered and took over New York and broke down that wall but the name of the place never changed from Wall Street what used to be the boundary of New York is now in the middle of New York they fixed the boundary then. They didn't know that there was a bigger plan for the city to expand beyond that. I don't know where they drew the boundaries in your life. But after this morning, you are exceeding those boundaries. Is someone hearing me? I said you are exceeding those boundaries. When I and Pastor MC went to Jerusalem in September, we got to a place where the, two, the tour guide was showing us the walls of Hezekiah. Hezekiah's wall was now underground. 2,000 years of dust have covered it. I don't know, maybe there are still some hidden walls in your life. The blood of Jesus cancels them. Amen. To their foundations, you have victory. Amen. You are crossing the measuring lines. Somebody shout, I receive. I receive. Amen, 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 amen. I want to worship the Lord with our tithe. Sometimes we trust in systems of men until they hurt us. As I sat in Dubai, I listened to another man who was invited. When he told his story, then I realized that I also have been through. Dr. Murdoch told the story of how he took $25,000 and bought shares in, my, in uh, Microsoft. Ten years later, his $25,000 became 19000 because when you trust in the system of man, it can go down, it can go up. After 10 years, 25,000 becomes 19,000. But you know, people sometimes have a problem in trusting the God who said there'll be a hundredfold return on their life. I remember going to the banks to take loan to buy shares in the bank in my country. And what was what 14 became four. And the same bank.